starting the uh, another session which is on the chi square and this chi square is uh, so before we start the session now you have to guess what is the value of this note please type in the chat box not to this uh, mentor should not answer this so vikram kushbu okay very ajaz is writing 20 Sinduri is also writing twenty, so there is a confusion between and ten also. Priya uh, is writing ten. Palak twenty ten paisa. Okay, Ashok is writing two. Sahaya is writing maybe two but not clear. Hari Priya is writing five. Harshit is writing two. So it's a two rupees note. So correct answer is two, not ten, not five, not twenty. It's a two rupees note. Okay, good one. so now we will cover this session under these headlines that is the we will first see the basic concept then we will see what are the research questions because now we are starting with the inferential statistics till now we did the descriptive statistics and in descriptive what we did there is because there is no uncertainty we are not hypothesizing okay so manoj is writing clue is there on the note because kannada okay good we we don't know that's why we got confused so it's good we will yeah we will remove <laughs> from now onwards we'll hide that okay that's oh good so the le learning lesson for us Th thank you manoj so uh, this uh, uh, what we were talking like till now we talked about the inferential uh, the descriptive statistics but now from uh, from now onwards we will be talking about the inferential statistics so we will have a null hypothesis and we will have a alternate hypothesis and depending on the accepting or the rejection of the null hypothesis we can see the p value and we can adopt a particular hypothesis so we i'll just demonstrate the commands the interpretation and then again summarize the commands before we go to the breakout room so today basically we are going to see the associations association between two categorical variable and if possible we will see the association between the two continuous variable that is the correlation so if i want to know whether there is any association between gender and diabetes status so can i say that diabetes is like associated with the male gender or maybe diabetes is associated with the female gender if i want to know any association then chi square test of association that we use suppose in this case the, you have conducted one study where you have selected individuals and you ask two questions like what is your gender and then you ask like whether you are diabetic or no then you have got this data you have made this 2 by 2 table which is also known as the cross tabulation or cross tab a two way table or a contingency table so what is a two way table or a contingency table whenever you arrange the data according to this two categorical variable and you have got this four square table that we will see this is known as the contingency table like in this case you can see male and female and diabetes no or yes so this is a two by two contingency table if you have a three categories of bmi like normal overweight and obese and you are taking diabetes as a absence of diabetes or presence of diabetes then such type of table where you have got three rows and two column that is known as the 3 by 2 table or 3 by 2 contingency table so you may get a result like this so just now focus on this one the first table so this table you can see that the number of diabetic and non diabetic they are same in male like in female if there are 25 and 25 total of 50 females so diabetes and non diabetes they are equal in the second table if you focus you can see that here there is some difference in case of a male 45 are diabetic whereas 35 are non diabetic 
in female 20 are diabetic and 30 non diabetic now coming to the third table if you see this table you can see that 60 are diabetic and 20 are non diabetic among males and 10 are diabetic in females whereas 40 are non diabetic so if you see these tables and if you even without using any statistical test can you guess like in which table there is no association in which table there is some association and in which table number there is a strong association please type in the chat box for which type so prashant harshit Harshit is writing one is no. Prashant is also writing one is no. Deep Shah, three strong. Anjana, Prashant, Sharli. Okay. First, no association. Sinduri, do two, some strong. Sharli, Rajan, Devidashi, Manoj. Yes. So, all of you are right. Even without using a statistical test, Kavita, Soma, all of you are correct. Like in first table, there is no association because numbers are equal in the second table there can be some association and in the third one you can see that there is a strong association so this you have answered so i'll go, move forward so the research question could be like if your research is having a research question where you want to see the relationship like in this case just for example that if you want to see the relationship between the bmi categories and the bmi category like i have divided that into three category it is up to you you can have a two category also so you have divided it into the normal overweight and obese and then you have got the history of the cardiovascular disease status which is present or absent the second research question could be like if you want to see the association between a surgical technique x and a surgical technique y because due to the and the outcome is the occurrence of the surgical site infection so if you want to see that you can again use a chi square test of association the third research question could be association between the quality of sleep where you have categorized the quality of sleep as good versus poor and the academic performance that also you have categorized as good versus poor of medical undergraduates and if you want to see the association between these two table so in all these research questions what have you observed you have seen that there are two categorical variables in all the questions and if we can recall the yesterday session what are the categorical variable so any variable which is nominal or ordinal that comes under the category of categorical variable a nominal variable is a variable where if you change the sequence it does not matter like if you change the sequence if you have kept kept one code for male and two for female even if you reverse it it is not going to make any change in the analysis. The ordinal is where you give number, but that is according to a definite order. Like we did mild, moderate, severe. So we cannot give code 3 to mild and 1 to severe because it is gradually rising. And there is one more question which many participants ask. Like if your ordinal category has 5 or more than 5 category, like many times you ask questions on Likert scale, like high disagree or slightly disagree or agree. So if your categorical or ordinal variable has got five or more than five level of categories, you can treat this like a continuous variable. You can treat this that score like a continuous variable. So this we mean by the categorical variable. So in this case, in chi-square, there are two categorical variables in all the questions and we are trying to look the association between these two. So, appropriate statistical test is the chi-square test of association or other way of saying it is a chi-square test of independence. Both are the same like the side of opposite side of the same coin. 
if you say that the chi square test of association is not there that means the two variables are independent of each other so but again we have to be very cautious that it does not measure causality even if you find that there is association between the male gender and diabetes you cannot say that the male gender is causal for happening of the diabetes and you all know from your previous knowledge that to say something as a causal you need to apply some other criteria of causality so chi square test of association does not indicate any causal association it just tells you regarding the association exist or not and then what is the strength of association so now what are the underlying assumptions of this chi square test of association so the first assumption so from now onwards in all the inferential statistics we first see our data whether that data satisfies some assumptions or not then only we can apply a particular test we cannot apply all the test to any sort of data that's why it is required that you do mention your assumptions in your statistical write up and you test also when you are applying a particular statistical test so underlying assumptions in this case is there should be two categorical variables then the two or more categories there should be at least two or more categories of each variable there should be independence of observation so what do i mean by independence of observation independence of observation means that if you have got two categories so like same example gender and diabetes so you have recruited one female obviously you will count that under female so you are not going to put that female in another category or like in case of a gender it is difficult like if you want to see the association between diabetes and hypertension in that case if you have counted one individual as a presence of diabetes then you cannot count the same individual as absent diabetes because if you have counted under one category he will not be counted in the other category of the same variable that we mean by the independence of observation then the next is at least it should have a relatively large sample size because there is one assumption in chi square test that at least each 80% of the cell frequency should have the expected count more than 5 in each cell and it is the expected count not the observed count so independence of observation means that there is no relationship between the subjects in each group so the categorical variable they are not paired like not paired means they are not related one more example of independence of observation is like if i have to do you cannot take a couple and take wife as a female representative and male or husband as a male representative because they are related to each other they have they share some similar characteristics that we know by the or we understand by the independence of observation and relatively large sample size we did that at least expected cell frequency in each cell should be at least one and in 80% of the cell it should be at least five so what is the uh, null hypothesis so null hypothesis is that there is no relationship between the variables that is the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis states that there is relationship between these two variables so now what do we understand by the expected frequency so chi square statistics is based on the difference between the observed and expected frequency so observed frequency is the frequency which you see in 2 by 2 table but this software or any software calculates the expected frequency in the background and difference of observed and expected frequency larger the difference more statistical significance you will get so it is defined as the count in each cell if null hypothesis is true that means there is no association so if the two variables are independent of each other 
your observed count will be equal to the expected count. Now, how can we measure the strength of association? Because if the value of <coughs> if the <coughs> if the p value of chi square is significant, we say that the there is association. But we can also quantify the association by the value of Kramer v. So there is something known as the Kramer v and phi value, which we will see in the Jam movie. And you can see that if the value of that Kramer v, it is up till 0.1, it is a small strength of association. It, if it is medium, then if it is 0.3, then it is a medium. And if it is large, then it is up till 2. 0.5. So we can say that large association, if the value of phi or Kramer v, it is more than or equal to 0.5, then the association is very strong. Okay. So this strength of association, you can also see on this chi square test of association. So now coming to the, uh, we can see the uh, question. So the question which I have to demonstrate, that is the, so uh, this is the question. So I did a retrospective study of 180 hospital records of COVID cases. I want to know what are the factors which were associated with the oxygen requirement in COVID cases at the time of admission. So I have to calculate the association between the oxygen requirement with smoking status. That means I want to say that the person who is a smoker, does he need more oxygen or less oxygen? And again, with the disease severity of the patients. So this I will open my demo sheet. So you can see here, now yesterday we used this option of exploration, but for today's purpose, we will use this option of frequencies. So can you see here, there is something known as this frequencies. So for all chi-square, we will use this option of frequencies. For descriptive, we use explore. So I'll click that frequencies. In frequencies, you can see that there is something known as the one sample proportion test. So this is one sample proportion test, but I am not using this one sample. Mine is focused on this contingency table. This one sample is the chi-square goodness of fit, which we are not covering because that is not a very common test which we use. Most common is the chi-square test of association. That's why I'll be using these contingency table which where there are options like chi-square test of association and McNemer test. McNemer we'll try to do. If not possible, we may touch this on fifth day when we will do the logistic regression. So this is the frequency and this is the, this I want, contingency table. So I have to enter the smoking status. So maybe smoker. So now you can see rows and column. So here what uh, general, uh, there is a rule that you should move the dependent variable to the column. So I always remember it by DC. Usually we CD is like C comes first and D, but here it is reverse dependent goes to column. So in smoking and oxygen requirement, so oxygen requirement is a dependent variable because we want to see the oxygen requirement and smoking status is an independent variable. So independent variable goes to the rows. That's why I have moved this smoker to the row and this column, I will move the oxygen requirement. So maybe this is the oxygen requirement, yes and no. This I have moved here to the column. 
So it will make a two by two table. First, that is the contingency table. And then if you click on statistics, you can see that there are many options here. So under these tests, this chi-square is already clicked. And you can see here the value of chi-square is 0 0.049. That means it is just significant, borderline significant, or you can say it is just significant. So you can see here that there are various options. Now there is an option known as the chi-square continuity correction. So before I touch upon these options, I will just show you the cells. So before we click these, you have to test the assumption. So what was my assumption? That the two variables should be categorical and each variable should have at least two or more than two categories. So both my variables are categorical. I have a relatively large sample size. Now there is one assumption that the expected cell frequency in each cell should be more than one. And in more than 80% of the cell, it should be more than five. So is this assumption satisfied? Can I, from this table, can I say that this assumption is satisfied or not satisfied? Please uh, type in the chat box. So all of you are, uh, Deep is writing, Severe is writing, yes. Akhila is also writing, yes. Okay, so then, is this the observed frequency or the expected frequency? What you can see here, observe, observe. So what is the, uh, what is the uh, assumption? Uh, do we have to comment on observed frequency or we should check for the expected frequency also? Expected, so very right. So I'll click these cells. And I'll click, although the number is large, I can assume that this will be at least five, but you should always check this expected count. So now you see the expected count. In SPSS, it gives you like a, as a star mark. Yes, Priya is right. We should check for expected. So you can see here that these are the expected counts. Like 89.52, 32.5. And this 42.5 and 15.5. So this difference from expected and observed. In case of a chi-square, we call it as a residual. I'm not going into the detail of those concepts, but just understand that you should check these expected count to check your assumption. So here in each of the cell is having the cell frequency more than one, and all cells are having cell frequency more than five expected cell frequency. So this assumption is also satisfied. So now I can go for the chi-square test. If this assumption is not satisfied, then what should I do? So in that case, you can go for the uh, Fisher exact test. If it is a two by two table, if it is a more than two by two table, like three by three or two by three, then you go for the continuity correction, which you have seen here. So if you have checked it, now I will again uncheck this because I don't need that for my table, but I need the row percentages. So this row percentages I need because I will have to write the interpretation. And then coming here, I will leave this as such because I am not going for either chi-square continuity correction or Fisher exact test because my uh, these assumptions are met. And you can see that the chi-square test is significant. So now how will I write the interpretation? So what you can do, there is an option in Jamovi because we said that you can write interpretation here only, and then you can copy paste that into Word. So what we normally do with each table, we write the description here only. And when you have to publish for the manuscript, the respective uh, write-up, which you think that it should go, or the respective table, many times you need to merge the table that goes together on the word. So maybe if I have to write the interpretation, what I will write here that the oxygen requirement, if you see the percentages, if the person is a smoker, 
the oxygen requirement here is 17% in case the person is smoker and if the person is not smoker the oxygen requirement is 31% so i can write that the oxygen requirement in non smoker is more so you can type that the oxygen requirement in non smoker is more than then you can again write how much like 17% if it is 17% in uh, smoker then it is 31.1% in the non smoker and which is significant so that you can write here you can give the value of chi square in the bracket that the value of chi square it is 3.89 with 1 degree of freedom and its p value that you can write as a write up and if you see the table so this is the dummy table which is there so you can write here like the uh, smoker and non smoker oxygen requirement no nes in the bracket you can mention the percentages and here test of association you can write the chi square test of association and here you can mention the value of chi square degree of freedom and its p value so coming to the second that is the second i have to check with the oxygen requirement with disease severity that is the asymptomatic or mild so this uh, it is not the smoking status rather it is the disease severity and this uh, we again we can go back to this and what i will do this is the instead of this i will move the disease severity so this is the disease severity which is the asymptomatic moderate and severe you can see and you can see that its value is 0.08 it is more than 0.05 uh, so uh, yes in this case again you can check for the expected i am coming priyanka to uh, your other questions so uh, in this you can check for the expected so go here and previous also i i did not tell you that phi and kramer v i am telling that also so you check for this and in this you can see the expected count so expected count is like uh, you can see in each cell it is more than 5 so that assumption is satisfied i can i can again uncheck that and the value of chi square it is not significant so if the value of chi square is not significant then you don't need to check for this chi phi and kramer v so with this let me first tell you regarding the first option which was the smoking status which i i have told you but one thing i i did not tell at that time so if you are like making this smoker we have talked about the strength of association so strength of association is this so this phi and kramer v this is for the Uh, uh this uh, we contingency coefficient we don't uh, see basically most of the time we see for the phi and kramer v so if the it is a 2 by 2 table it the value of phi and kramer v is same and kramer v is applicable to more than 2 by 2 table so you can see it is value is 0.147 so what we did that if the value is less than up till 0.1 then we call it as a uh, effect size or very really small strength of association if it is up till 0.3 we call it as a moderate so it is a moderate effect size that you have to mention in the result also and then uh, again uh, this is same in the plots you can see that there are some options of like same uh, but we don't use these plots here in side by side bar type for chi square and uh, this is regarding and then the other check boxes which uh, priyanka is asking this we click only when the sample size is less so if the sample size is less than 40 then generally we click for this chi square continuity correction or if the expected cell count is less than 5 then we click this fisher exact test this z test for proportion i'll tell uh, later and the other uh, these also we will do in the risk uh, measurement 
So any other thing which is left, any other check boxes? Priyanka, do you want any other explanation of these chi square? You can unmute and ask also if you are not uh, able to see I. Okay, so confidence interval is basically it will be used in case of odds ratio. Uh, because here you can see it is the comparative measure like odds ratio and relative risk. So for those, we will use this confidence interval. It will not be used for the options which are here. So if you, if you are using these tests, the confidence interval will not come. But if you are using these like odds ratio and relative risk, then this option of confidence interval will come. Okay. So what is effect size? Okay, it is by default it is checked because but it will be it will be used only when you click any options here in the odds ratio. Like if you click odds ratio here, then you will see that it will give you a odds ratio that is the 0 0.461 with its upper and lower boundary of the odds ratio. Otherwise, if you don't click any of these, this odds ratio will not come. Now, Anju is asking regarding effect size. So, effect size is Anju like effect size is something where you have the statistical significance. Like many times, if you increase the sample size for the same research question, if I take a 1000 sample or 2000 or large population based sample, then your p value, p value is for the statistical significance p value will be very less it will be like less than 0 0.00001 let's say i am giving you one example that you are doing a trial where you are proposing a new drug and this new drug is able to lower the blood pressure only by 1 mm or by 2 mm as compared to the standard treatment but you have done a study where that statistical significance has come but for a clinician, this statistical significance is not always used. So that's why we always talk of these effect sizes. So this effect sizes, you can understand there are various measure of these effect sizes. Like in chi-square, we measure it by the phi and Kramer v. If you go to the in, uh, other tests like ANOVA and independent sample, there are other measures of effect sizes. So, effect sizes talks about the clinical significance. So, lowering of 1 millimeter of blood pressure or a 2 millimeter of blood pressure is not very significant for a clinician. So, that if the value of effect size, if it is up till 0.1, it says that it is of very little clinical significance. It is If it is up till 0.3, it says that it has got moderate sig clinical significance. And if it is 0.5 or up more than that, then it is, uh, we call it as a strong uh, effect size or a large clinical significance. So effect sizes, that's why these days many journals, they are asking for effect sizes because for evidence-based medicine or just to translate uh, this research into practice, we need to report the effect sizes, which make, which tells that apart from statistical significance, there is a clinical significance also with that hypothesis. So that's why the concept of effect sizes comes. Anju, did you get it? Okay. So in this case, we will learn more about the effect sizes as we advance uh, to the sessions. Uh, Dr. Vijay, do you want to say something? Okay, I thought you are about to say. So anyone having any questions up till this point, please you can ask. You can unmute and ask also. Okay, so if not, then again I will... Uh, there is one more thing. If this chi-square value is not significant, then you don't need to check for the clinical significance. That means the concept of effect size comes when there is a statistical significance. If there is a no statistical significance, then we don't talk about the effect sizes. Similarly, in case of a chi-square, if the value of the p-value is less, if it is more than 0 
then we don't click this fi and kramer way okay uh, uh, ma'am one question uh, yes so ma'am we have to mention the effect size only in the clinical studies and other studies we don't mention about the effect size no 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 you should mention because every study has got some clinical even if you are in a community medicine microbiology whatever clinician means like all the medical science branches they have they got the clinical significance even if you are doing any other any study so that significance you should uh, mention anjana uh, is asking so i was i try okay. to ask like only in the trials or when the patients are involved at that time we mention or in no no you can do it in microbiology in pharmacology in community medicine okay ma'am everywhere okay ma'am thank you Uh, yes yeah, correction yes so anjana is asking effect size yes anjana in this case effect size is defined by i told that both phi and kramer v actually phi is only applicable for 2 by 2 table you will see that it is a 2 by 2 table so it gives you both phi and kramer v value both are same actually in this case in case of a 2 by 2 table you will see that its magnitude is also same in case of a 3 by 3 3 by 2 table this phi value doesn't come so maybe i'll shift this smoker here and we can take the total comorbidities this is a three categories so in case of a three category you will see this phi the coefficient it doesn't come you will only get a kramer v value so that's why uh, this is applicable kramer v for a more than 2 by 2 contingency table phi coefficient is applicable for a 2 by 2 table and rupali is asking is there any, any yes i told now that if the sample size is less then you need to click this chi square continuity correction also in that case it will give you the value of chi square in this case since the sample size is not less that's why this continuity correction value is same otherwise you will have a, a different value of this chi square with this continuity correction so that is there rupali but right. we don't need in this case if you have got adequate sample size you don't need to check these continuity correction this is only done if the sample size is less than 40 so, because in that case yes rupali uh, that means yates correction is synonymous to this continuity correction yates correction yes yes it is same as continuity correction right. Thank actually you. yates proposed that that's why many people call it as yates correction and many we call it as a continuity correction right uh madam may i ask one question yes kaushik uh actually the um, uh, fisas exact test uh we uh, previously it was used for 2 by 2 only because it was it is computationally extensive or exhaustive so now uh, at least in r or jamo b everywhere uh, for multiple uh, rows and columns you can get fisher says that is so why we are thinking about chi square or chi square continuity correction because as the simple size increases chi square approximates the exact value so if we can always use exact value and if our computer uh, accepts the or can calculate this so why we not always report fisher says that rather than we think about all these assumptions are there or not so you can do that like now you said that fisher exact is uh, in spss fisher exact is still there only for 2 yes, by 2 yes, but, but, yes uh, but here uh, it gives you so you can use fisher exact also it is up to you okay. so if there are no any any query if there are no queries then we can move to the breakout room and there is a exercise so here one more Ria, question Yeah, can yeah. we use yates correction for uh, more than uh, like 3 into 2 or 3 into 3 tables yes 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 you can do in fact okay. generally it is recommended for uh, those number because in that case you will ha have less number of sample in each the more contingency table you have the same individual will be distributed in each cell so there are more chances that you will ha have less number of individual in cell expected frequency that's why many a times like students come to us with a 4 by 5 table or a 5 by 5 table so we always suggest them to club the category like if you have got like my uh, small mild moderate severe and then four other category so in each cell the numbers are very small so that's why we ask them to maybe to have a better result 
club the category and then uh, do it okay ma'am madam i have one question regarding the hypothesis one sided or two sided uh... yes uh, please ask yeah uh, when to select uh, one sided hypothesis versus uh, two sided hypothesis you know so in this case if you see generally we go for the two sided hypothesis in this case you can see by default it is like two sided so the only difference is when you are sure that in which group it will be less or more then the only thing the difference between these two is regarding the sample size you know that when you click these even if uh, like you can see the values here if i go for this then again you can see that this p value is 0.86 if i am saying that group 1 is more than group 2 if i am clicking this then also it is the same if you click this then also it is not going to make any difference so this is more uh, when you are sure that you know uh, group 1 or whatever like if i am saying that the diabetes is more in female and if i am sure like the direction of this hypothesis then the null hypothesis i will write that it is not it is same but in alternate i will write that it is more in women in that case i may choose to click one option but this is this hypothesis testing uh, that is more true in a context with the sample size because for the same sample size if you are taking a one sided hypothesis then the sample size goes a little low if you are taking a two sided hypothesis your sample size requirement goes high and it is ideally recommended that you should uh, have a uh, two sided hypothesis but again it is up to the researcher if you are sure you can again click this it is not going to make much difference in context to this uh, chi square value and the p value okay madam thank you okay so riya is uh, we should only look for fisher if our assumptions are not met if met then no need to go for fisher yes that's true because that uh, assumption only that uh, expected cell frequency is there so any other query before we 